and welcome to Quilt Moxie, the podcast where Quilt Moxie meets Craftsy.com, an online community dedicated to providing the best education and resources for crafters. Join me, Ariana, your host, and come along on my video journey where I participate in the Craftsy online classes and community. Meet up with us online at QuiltMoxie.com or at your favorite hangout, Craftsy, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter. Check the credits at the end of the show for more. You can also subscribe to our mailing list to get your next and every episode with show notes delivered directly to your email as soon as the episode is available. It's as simple as dropping your email address and checking receive podcast by email. Hello, everybody. This is episode 22. And today, we're going to start in the gallery with my Icelandic sweater, which is complete. Then we're going to go from Franken bra to bra magic with the fairy bra mother herself, Beverly Johnson. Yes, I'm going to be sewing a bra. And we're going to wrap it up in the lab, let's call it the lab, with lizards and frogs and acid. So let's get started in the gallery. Now, for those of you who remember, last time I had a little cliffhanger. I wasn't sure how I was going to complete my Icelandic sweater, which I'm wearing now, and I'm going to stand up just so that you can see it. So here you go. This is what it looks like on the inside. And what I ended up doing was, yes, I used the fabric instead of the ribbon to cover my steak. So this was my fat quarter cotton. And it was very easy to cover. And I really love this cardigan. I did the buttons. The buttons I just got out of um, uh, a pile of buttons, and lo and behold, they don't have to match, but I've got matching buttons. Who would have guessed that in my, my button jar there would be matching buttons? And I followed the instructions as per Raga to do the little buttonholes with the crochet hook. It was all very quick. And this sweater has been with me through all long, long winter. So I would say I've really worn it practically everywhere and practically every day. This is, uh, I love this sweater. And uh, nothing is scratchy about it. And Raga says that the more you wear it, the better it gets. I might even show you the little bit of, this morning I, I decided I was going to videotape the snow outside my window. So I might just put that here for you to see that we're still experiencing sort of snow. Ah, oh, I can't wait for it to go away. But on the other hand, I get to wear this sweater even on the inside. Inside the house, I'm wearing this sweater all the time. So um, go ahead, sign up for, for this class. You're going to love it. You're going to get so much out of it. So let's start with another cliffhanger that I had from our last podcast. At the last podcast, I said at the end of the show, I wasn't sure which sweater I was going to be knitting next. Well, guess what? I'm not knitting. I'm doing the first sewing class through Craftsy. And um, you would think, well, you already know how to sew and you know how to quilt. Yes, that's true. But I was a little bit scared because it's not just sewing, it's sewing bras. So, uh, yeah, I signed up for both sewing bras that Beverly Johnson, uh, the fairy bra mother, gives on Craftsy. And uh, if you are anywhere outside of uh, as Miss, uh, as Amy Herzog likes to say, Miss Average's size for bras. Stop, the, stop the podcast. 
sign up for this class right now. So uh, I'm going to have to get my glasses on because I did contact Beverly and she has sent me some information that I'm going to read to you, which I printed microscopically, but I'm going to read it here. So Beverly Johnson is actually here in Canada. She's just next door to uh, Quebec, which is where I live. She's in Ontario. So um, Beverly Johnson has produced a line of 37 intimate apparel patterns for bras, swimwear, panties, and corsets. Just wondering if I can control the giggle factor when we start, when I start showing you what I've done. Uh, she has also written five books, The Bra Maker's Manual with 240 pages, The Bra Maker's Manual Volume 2 with 230 pages, and the Make and Fit series of books, Make and Fit Your Own Bra, Make and Fit Panties, Make and Fit swim, swimwear, swimwear. Each of those books is shorter in length and give complete instructions as well as fitting advice and style changes. Wow. She is the lady you need to help you make a bra. And the class itself, as you know, what I like to do is I like to watch it in its entirety, at, which I did. When I purchased the class, it came out, I think, I think I bought it in December. I watched it. I went through it. Totally scared. But what I did do is I ordered the Craftsy Bra Kit because... Um, Beverly has put together a kit for you to make your own bra following the class. And you get free underwires that go with it where you have to measure to get them. So the first thing she has you do in the class is make something called a Franken bra. And she says, you know, just put it together. And that's what I did. I followed her instructions. I didn't think twice. I took some of my scrap fabric, probably not the best selection of fabric, so, but I'm going to show you what I did. Um, let me see if I can find bra number one. Just to tell you, I have three Franken bras and one almost finished bra that I used the kit from. Um, which one was my first one? So... I also bought two bra patterns with the kit. So the, one of the ones that I bought was this one. I hope you can see that. And this is the bra pattern that she is actually demonstrating in the class, the first class. Um, yeah, and I also bought the Shelly bra, which is the bra that I ended up creating with the kit fabric. Okay, so the first bra that I did, which we, we are going to call a Franken bra, was like this. And you can see that I'm using scrappy, scrappy fabric. And I'm just putting it together because, and I put it together very quickly. Very quickly, uh, Beverly says that you just put it together so that you can fit, get the proper fit. So this is like you would do a muslin. And even on the inside, you'll notice here that instead of the uh, appropriate... Now, what is it called? There is a name for it where you put the wire in. It might just come back to me. In any case, I used a uh, bias, just a bias to do that. And then tried on the Franken bra. And at the end of the, uh, the crafts class, uh, our, our fairy bra mother guides us on how we have to adjust the fit for the bra. Well, I was way off in sizing. I had the wrong size, the wrong cup size, the wrong everything. And I, I was able to do lots and lots of um, modifications like for example you'll see here I put in a, a dart so that it would make it smaller and then she also shows you how you change your pattern pieces 
for the Frankenbrot. Now you're going to notice, look at this, there's no closure. Because once I had it tried on and adjusted to the new patterns, well, I had to create another Frankenbra with the modified bra pieces. So I no longer needed the closure, but because I'm making another Frankenbra, I just cut it off with a scissor and I applied it to one of the three. I'm not sure which one, it could have been the last one. Uh, Frankenbras that I created. So the second Frankenbra that I created, I thought that was going to be my last one. By the way, I guess I'm doing this for for myself as well as my daughter who are outside the Miss Average range. So let's just say that the first bra size that I did was size fabulous okay so then the second size I went up to the gorgeous size which I thought was going to be the size that I required and the same for my daughter so here is size gorgeous in the modified bra pattern let me see do I have the right one yes in the modified bra pattern, but this time I took the Shelly pattern. And the Shelly pattern, you'll see, has more pieces in the cup to give you, uh, I guess, a different look. Because my, my whole intention was that I was going to use the Shelly pattern to do the Craftsy bra kit. So, okay, so here's bra number two. And look at the closure on this one. Neat, neat, neat. Yeah, there's no closure, but I found out, um, I, I did the modifications and it looked like it was going to fit, etc. Tried it on myself, tried it on my daughter, uh, still with the, the bias on the inside. And uh, the modifications did help a lot. And I got to try the Shelly pattern, so I figured, Okay, two Frankenbras. They did not take long. I'll, I'll let you guys know that. Uh, because I just put them together fast. Really, really fast. I mean, if I sewed straight, it, it was a miracle. Okay, so now we're up to using the Craftsy Bra Kit from Beverly. And I also had some lace lying around in my collection of fabrics and goodies which I decided I was going to match and it, the colors match perfectly whoa so now I'm using the bra kit and you're gonna see a total difference in the final bra but what you won't see is the little red bow that you sew on when you've completed your bra because you're not going to believe this it still does not fit perfectly. But here's the bra. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And here's the lace that I had in my collection. Now I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up properly. And you'll see the, the fun uh, details. This is all part of the bra kit that Beverly sends you. So the only thing that I added was the lace that's added here on the back of your what would you call this? Now, of course, while I was watching the Craftsy class, I knew all the terminology. Look how nicely everything matches and how gorgeous the, uh, the elastics and the little... See, look at that. How pretty. Okay, and on the inside, you'll see that you have the correct... Uh, what does she call this? Tubing? I'm not sure. That's where the underwire goes. Yeah, so the bra looks great. And I put it on and it was too tight. So back again to the drawing board. So now this is size gorgeous. Remember I started with size fabulous. Size gorgeous. 
still too small, a little bit too tight, and definitely too tight for my daughter. My daughter is, yes, not far from the apple tree, but she has definitely more than size gorgeous. Um, I love it. The thing I did, which is something that Beverly mentions, is that you can double up on the the elastic she has names for all this stuff um i don't know what it is but it's it's where your band is stretchy in the back and i did double up if you're a larger size this gives you just a bit more support and i did take her advice on that where i did not look or did not follow her advice properly was with setting up my needle in my sewing machine now sometimes when you get skipped stitches it's not because uh, that there's something wrong with your sewing machine etc it's because you've got the wrong needle thread fabric combination and that's what I had I had the wrong uh, first of all I was using silk thread which uh, was the wrong thread for this fabric this is some sort of a basically use a ballpoint needle with polyester thread that's what you need to know. Otherwise, you might risk having slipped stitches, which is what I did have. So I don't know if the camera is going to pick up some of my slipped stitches. And had I, um, you know, I could have taken it apart, but it was my first bra that actually it fits pretty well, but it's just snuggy. So. It looks very good but for my next bra I'm going to go for size happy and so size happy meant that guess what we had to do another Franken bra so the third Franken bra I involved my daughter because my daughter is going to have to make her own bras in the future because of her size happy size and uh, those bras are not easy to come by and generally when you do find one that fits properly it is expensive her last two bras were in excess of a hundred dollars to get a nice fitting bra and the same thing for her sports bra because she my daughter is an avid soccer player if you can imagine size happy running um and uh of course she has to have the proper sp sports bra so now i asked her to sew the new franken bra in size happy and this is what she did now, I still had a little bit of the red left over after I made Size Gorgeous. And I was able to use it here. Here, you'll see, this is where I had cut off the closure from the first bra, and I just sewed it on top, just so that we could do the Franken bra fitting. And um, my daughter sewed everything. She has sewn this Franken bra. It did not take her long. I think it was one evening that we spent doing this Franken bra. But what we did get out of it is what will hopefully become a proper fitting bra, at least for me, for sure. And I'm not sure if size happy is going to be big enough for my. So I know that my next bra, once I call up uh, our fairy bra mother for more supplies, my next bra is going to fit properly. And I'm going to be sure to have polyester thread. Um, you'll see that here I'm going to have to put in another notch to make it slightly tighter on the cup area for size happy, and that's mine. Whereas my daughter, her notch is very tiny. She has a very tiny notch for an adjustment, and I'm not sure if the size will be still a bit too small for her cup size. 
So I'm looking forward to sewing up my next bra, which will, I mean, size gorgeous already fits, but snug. I think this one is going to be the best fitting bra that I have. And for the amount of time that it took me to sew up uh, the Franken bras, I think it's time very well spent. Uh, if you are at all difficult to fit, um, or if, for example, you've had a mastectomy or something like that, there's no reason why you cannot have gorgeous, gorgeous bras that you make yourself. Now, I signed up right away. I didn't even hesitate for the second bra because there is another one Lily has come out with. And this bra does your 50 shades of bra magic. So any bra that you can conceptualize, she goes over how you do it. Uh, if you go to the Craftsy uh, student projects, you're going to see a lot of very happy students who are showing off their bras. Yes, you're not going to see that on this podcast. But if you want to see what they have created, you are going to be amazed. I will come back and do the second class as well and maybe do... I don't know which one of the 50 shades of bra magic I will select, but I'd like to make one happy size that's going to fit me and show that to you after I order some gorgeous supplies from uh, Beverly. And one of the uh, 50 shades of bra magic for the next class. And hopefully, I'm not sure if we have to get another pattern size for my daughter, hopefully she will also have her own gorgeous so i i don't have anything i don't know what to say you guys need to sign up for this class and take a leap i was scared going in even though i do have sewing background but she, beverly makes it so easy for you to create your own bra you don't need to be like a magician on the sewing machine uh, it's it's really really great the one thing that i will agree with beverly and i would like to encourage you guys to do the same thing is do your franken, franken bra do it quickly don't even don't make it perfect it doesn't have to be because what you're doing is you're just trying to get your next bra to fit perfect beverly says 70 percent of the people that make their first Franken bra will have a Franken bra that looks gorgeous and will actually fit. But if you know you're one of those 30%, just cut out the pieces and sew it up in under two hours. You'll have your Franken bra and follow the instructions as Beverly to do the modifications to get a good. I do have a bit of bad news. What's the worst thing that could happen when you're sewing? Your bobbin runs. I thought for sure that one bobbin was going to be enough for one bra. Well, I will, I will let you guys know that it's just a smidge more than one bobbin. So if you don't like winding bobbins, maybe you could try winding two bobbins or a bobbin and a half or a bobbin and a quarter. It's just a bit more than one bobbin before you start so you don't have that frustration. So I hope you liked our first sewing craftsy class. Now I would like to go into our lab and talk about lizards, and frogs, and acid. So um, lizards and frogs and acid, again, uh, I think it's more because of the theme of the Franken bra that I'm thinking of that. But you'll see in the background that uh, we've we've got another frog that is joining our our Zen frog and our Namaste frog, and it's the Chill Out frog, which I've put together here. Our Etsy 
endeavor with Aussie Yarning, our collaboration it has come to fruition. I have received a package of sparkly, gorgeous stitch markers from Joyce. And uh, I want to show some of, some of them off to you. Joyce has created coordinating stitch markers for all of the the uh, Zen Frog bags and uh, some of the other uh, project bags that you see here. So I'm going to show show them to you. I hope the camera is going to pick up how beautiful they are. And I've removed the uh, plastic wrapping so that you don't have too much of a glare, but they're just delightful. And what we've done is, uh, in addition to four of the stitch markers that go with whatever um, project bag that you have from our Quilt Moxie Etsy shop, we've added a beginning of row marker. And that one is on each one of them. So here's the flower giggle, one of the... Oh, See, if I wouldn't have opened it, it would have been still in a very, in the gorgeous display that it is. But I hope you can see these. Look how beautiful those resin stitch markers are. And we have a bunch of them. They're just some, uh, they're ovals. Here's the Zen frog in white. We have zipper pulls. So we have zipper pulls that look like this. Yeah. So um, Joyce has beautifully packaged the four stitch markers and one beginning of row marker that coordinate with all of the project bags. And since the last time, I've put together what we call the DPN holders that coordinate. Look what else Joyce did. This is so cute. Look! Our Zen frog in resin. Isn't that gorgeous? He's reversible. So, I thought that was so cute. So what Joyce did was, she had me send her some fabric. And look what she did. Oh, that is so delightful. The last email she says uh, maybe we can use this as a bookmark but every time I look at the Zen frog it just makes me think of Joyce. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay so back to our DPN holders. So um, as I'm knitting with my DPNs on socks I noticed that it would be fun to have those DPN holders. I've seen them before Usually they're with snaps, but I used my little magnetic uh, snaps on the inside. And of course, I need to have a stitch marker or a zipper pull or something. So I added this little holder for your stitch markers or whatever you need to have nearby. Perhaps you need your darning needle for your kitchener. And also, on the theme of collaboration. In addition to the collaboration that we have going on with uh, Aussie Yarning, in terms of matching your stitch markers and your zipper pulls and all your sparkly, I guess, knitting jewelry to your project bags and DPN holders, I contacted, actually, I bought a pattern from Craftsy, one of the Craftsy designers. And uh, I guess her name, she runs under Ramona Rose, the sock sack pattern, which you will find very popular on Etsy as well. And what she does is she has a pattern for socks two at a time as well, which is how I like to do my knitting. So I'm going to show you the other. Oh. So, so this is her sock sack pattern. And... I have a cottage, I've purchased a cottage license, I believe that's what she calls it, where she gives me permission to use her pattern 
to create sock sacks for knitting two at a time. And what it looks like is, of course, I had to put a place where you hang your gorgeous stitch markers. Is let's see if you can see the inside here. So you see on the inside, you have a zippered notions pouch that sort of separates the two sides of your your project bag. And on the side, she has. Although she uses snaps, and I'm using my little magnetic uh, snaps here, where you have yarn guides on each side for your two yarns. Okay, so I hope we're back now. I was just about to show you the inside of the sock sack and the zippered notions pouch, where you can bring all sorts of stuff with you. So, if you uh, prefer to have a uh, sock sack version with this as a divider to doing your two at a time, well, I now have a, uh, another collaboration with a Craftsy designer to sew some up for our Etsy shop. And you can get them through Quilt Moxie, the Etsy shop. Or you can just go on to Craftsy and get one of your own patterns and sew yourself one of these cute little sock sack bags. Um, I'm going to show you another sock sack bag. This time I added one of the hanging bags inside. These little hanging bags that I like to have. And I also have a lizard in here. So this is where the lizard comes in for part of the lab. Now, I believe it was in episode, was it 17 or 6? One of, either episode 6 or 17 where I talk about socks. And where I had that tragedy that happened with my fluoromania wool which I love I love this color and I had to uh, call up Regia and see this is what happened to my sock I was knitting it with Regia white and Regia fluoromania and once I blocked it the white turned into pink even though I did all sorts of stuff to try to prevent the color bleed and I didn't succeed and Regia had me send them the sock so that their labs could analyze it which they did and we did a whole bunch of experiments with vinegar and all sorts of stuff to try to set the color which didn't work hmm in any case they sent me back my sock which was great because I had the other sock and this is the other sock. Now you're going to see that the color just doesn't look quite the same. But this sock no longer bleeds. And that is because I used the Knit More Girls um, Citric Acid to set the color. And, and it does set the color. In fact, I did another test to mix the Fluoromania with white, with the set color, and try to see if it would bleed like this, and it didn't. It was still white after the fact. But what you will notice, because as you know, when I dye yarn, I do it in a big ball right away. I had another one, I had three or four of these Fluoromania balls. So I took one of them and I put them into the citric acid solution and did it directly in my microwave in the ball like this. Followed the instructions and this ball no longer uh, bleeds. But you're going to see, and I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but the color is slightly more ochre if we can call it that. So the lemon yellow turned into sort of a yellow ochre color. And the green 
um, went from the fluorescent green, bright green, to a sort of a an olivey green on the citric acid. So I'm not sure if it's because of the citric acid that I used, and I'm going to show you which one it is. It's this one. This is the citric acid that I used to set the dye. But it, 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 it does not bleed, which is great. But it's not this color, which I still love. On the other hand, I do love this color as well. But the sock, I mean, the sock is nice, but it's not the same uh, colors as it was before. And I might have a picture here for you to show what the original sock looked like. Anyway, getting on with it. So now I have this um, I also did a, I should mention that I also did the citric acid dye on my Yawol mitt. This is the Susie Rogers reading mitt. And the colors still look great. They're not going to run, but it's definitely got, has sort of a, um, a feeling of ochre. Ochre yellow all throughout. So what did I want to show you here? Okay. So here is one of these sock sacks in my Flower Giggles collection. This one has sort of a stripy side. And I've got a hanging bag in here with, let's see if we can see inside. I'm not sure. Does it show? Okay, so you see inside a bit. You're going to see I've got my Notions pouch with my gorgeous zipper pull and oh yes, I have my matching DPN holder with some gorgeous, gorgeous matching sparkle. I have a zipper pull with the uh, Flower Giggles motif and some extra stitch markers. And this is my DPN holder, so you can see inside is my lizard sock and my magnetic snaps, just like the, uh, the other ones. And this one, I'm not using DPNs, but it would work with DPNs, but it's actually holding my, my circulars. So here you can see the beginnings of, let me show you the actual sock that I'm making which is from the Op Art um, sock book by Stephanie van der Linden. I'm following the Cal on Ravelry. And this is the sock that everybody is knitting. Can you see it? So what you should be seeing is the Escher um, lizard motifs. And I was kind of surprised that it actually shows, because I'm using the Floromania, and I'm using Invictus yarns, which I love. Invictus yarns. Do I have the ball band? Yes, I do. Here we go. Here's the ball band. And um, that was one of the skeins that I may have won participating in these cows, which is a lot of fun when you get yarn sent to you. And I would have never tried it otherwise and it makes such a huge difference okay what was i saying so here i wanted to show you that i've been trying out all of these little stitch markers and look how cute so here's my beginning of row marker and you can see each repeat has one of these gorgeous matching stitch markers that go with my project bag and my DPN holder. I think that's so much fun. So thank you so much, Joyce, for all the time and effort you put into that. It's just a lot of fun. Okay, 
what else has happened. So, oh, so in the back here, I've put this up in case I forget. But you're going to see, this is the way Joyce packages her gorgeous stitch markers. They all are individually packaged and just beautiful, beautiful. So let's see. Um, okay, let's take a look at our Chill Out Frog. Another sock sack. And this time, our frog is more of a country frog. Again, we have our our yarn guides with the magnetic snaps and on the inside we have our divider in the form of a zippered pouch. A lot of fun. Okay. Um. And last but definitely most importantly our personal craftsy club we have prize winners i've contacted it, the two prize winners who have been participating in our personal craftsy club of course i'm a little bit guilty of not participating very much myself but i'm re i would really love to encourage you guys if you do anything with a craftsy class it doesn't have to be the whole class just a little bit Show us what you're doing, how you like it, any, if you finish any of the projects. If you're just learning one concept, show, post it in the chatter thread. Show us your partial projects. Um, uh, YasmitaYazi.com has agreed to give us prizes for any of our Personal Crafts Club participants. And uh, true to her word, she's going to be sending the two winners uh, their craftsy prize soon. In fact, I have news from Yazzie that I printed microscopic size. So I'm going to get my glasses on. Hopefully I'll be able to see what I printed. Let me see. Where is it? Oh my goodness, it's so small. Look, look at this. Can you even see how tiny this is? All right. Um, all right. So right now, Yassi is preparing for the Australian Quilt Convention next week. And it is a very big show. So if you're anywhere there, go and say hi to Yassi. Remember that um, with Quilt Moxie as a coupon code, it entitles you whether you are a... Uh, a shop, a wholesaler, etc., to discounts that we've got listed on our website. So just mention it to Yazzie if you want to uh, take advantage of the Quilt Moxie discount code. And if you're just purchasing your own personal Craftsy, uh, Craftsy, excuse me, Yazzie.com organizer from her website, mention Quilt Moxie. I believe there are still some. I don't know what the discount rate is, but there is a discount attributed to it uh, that you might want to take advantage of. Okay, so she's going to be at the Australian Quilt Convention next week. Ginny Beyer is a guest teacher there. Can you imagine? Isn't that so cool? Uh, so if you're anywhere there, you have to meet Ginny Beyer. I do have a... Um, a small connection to Ginny Beyer besides the fact that I love what she does. The quilt shop where I was teaching uh, my cathedral window moxie technique here in Montreal, actually on the West Island, was, um, I think it was the first, I think Eve said it was the first quilt shop. It was open for 30 years and I was there when they had to close a couple of years ago. So sad, so sad. In any case, Ginny Beyer also taught at La Maison de Calico by Eve in, on the West Island way back in the day. So that's my small, tiny, itty-bitty connection to Ginny Beyer. Okay, getting back to Yassi. Um, let's see. Our next uh, podcast, the next couple of podcasts, I'm going to be promoting, showing off some more of her Yazzie bags. Today I'm going to talk about 
one of her uh, storage organizers that she sent me, which I love. I love, love, love. Um, she is going to be heading to the Minneapolis quilt market. So if you're going to be at the Minneapolis quilt market, I should have checked the dates. Maybe um, I'll put that in the show notes so that you can uh, click through to that. She will be there as well. And guess what? I put it up here in the back. I don't know if you can focus in on it, but they are opening a fulfillment center for Yazzie in Denver in June. Is that not amazing? So you will be able to get your Yazzie organizer very quickly if you're ordering from um, Canada, United States, because as we know, coming from Australia is a big trip. So how amazing is that? I'm so thrilled for Yazzie.com. Very, very, very nice. So let me show you the organizer that I have been using, and it's actually my go-to organizer. And I don't use it. Uh, so what it, it's called the crochet hook organizer, but guess what? It's the everything organizer to me. So look what I have been doing. In fact, look what's sticking out here. I, I even put in my circular needles. Now, it would be fun if we could figure out how to tame the beast here. And I don't know why I'm, I'm using this to hold my circular needles, but for some reason this is my go-to organizer, even for circular needles. So let me show you what I've got and what I'm housing in my crochet hook organizer. Do you see that? And it's not in any particular order. So, although I could do OCD if I wanted to, I just don't. And I don't find that it's necessary for me to put this in any sort of categorized, structured way. I just, I just go to this uh, organizer to put all of my, my stuff. I just love it. It's, it's so well made with the cover that covers up your tips and points so nothing will fall out. And uh, it just folds up so quickly, so easily. And of course the Vel Velcro closure keeps everything so secure. And look at how it is really, really well made. Just gorgeous. And so, and you can see how much usage this is getting. I mean, open, close, open, close, and you can see all the fuzz that's been accumulating because of my sweaters and wool and yarn and just general usage. I love it. Love it. And um, I just wanted to, since we're in the lab still, talk a little bit about uh, what else I've been doing besides the citric acid. Um, concoctions and experimentation. So on the theme of needle holders, this is what I learned from Joyce of Aussie Yarning Podcast. And basically it is one of those, those tubes that you get in your plumbing department with the caps that go with it. And I got this after I watched actually Tina Tina of Knitting Blooms podcast fame, she had her hubby build her a Nitty Naughty, which I put over here. Let me just remove our Zen Frog. So this is my interpretation of the Nitty Naughty. I'm not sure if I showed this also on a podcast, but it's basically those plumbing supplies. So you see, it all comes apart with those caps that I just showed you for the needle holder. And when you change the size of the middle bar, you can make a big one or a small one. So this is what I got from watching uh, Tina's uh, podcast. I don't remember which one it was, but you just go to your hardware store and you just ask, buy one of these uh, tubes. I don't know what they're called 
plumbing tubes. No idea. And they will cut it for you. They probably will. They might even charge you, I don't know, 25 cents or 50 cents a cut or whatever it is. But you get to have your nitty naughty. And whoops, here, here I have an extra piece that I had for I don't know what reason. And you can make your little, where did I put it now? Needle holder like um, Joyce showed me. I don't have it. Oh, here it is. This one. And the, the flowers, of course, that's duct tape because I just wanted to have something a little bit more feminine. So, yeah. We're going to be continuing with our craftsy, um, personal craftsy club. So please come and join us on uh, Quilt Moxie the podcast. And I've just recently started playing around in Instagram, so I hope to continue doing that as well. And join me next time, where maybe I might have another bra, or I might start another sweater. I really don't know, but let's find out next time. So until then, bye for now, à la prochaine.